Last time on Dragon Ball Z, at long last, Daddy made his way back home. The day of the World Martial Arts Tournament had finally arrived and just as promised, Son Goku was there to greet his companions with a warm smile after cashing in his good boy points, allowing him to be present on Earth for one special day. Hugs were shared and tears were shed as the Earth's champion caught up with his companions after his long absence, hearing tales of their conquests both on and off the battlefield as they prepared for the festivities to begin. Mr. Satan kicked the festivities off with a bang, setting a record on the tournament's new punching machines that were going to be utilized to determine which of the warriors present today had what it takes to earn their spot in the ring. Much to the dismay of the competition, it didn't take long for the Z fighters to prove they were built different from the rest, shattering the punching machines' records despite their best efforts to hold back and avoid the suspicion of the tournament goers. Prince Vegeta was the last of the entourage to put his mitts on the punching machine and after an explosive display of power, showcased that he was more than fit to take on whatever challenges the Budokai had to offer. With only Gohan and Videl left to secure their spots in the ring, the rest of the Z homies headed for the top of the arena to see what sort of entertainment the junior tournament had to offer. Because if there's one thing you can be sure of, it's that the sons of Goku and Vegeta are always good for putting on a show. Videl's reaction to the Z homies victimizing those punching machines was pure comedy. Not knowing they were any relation to Gohan, she starts cooking them up from across the field, asking her classmate in his do-rag just who the hell this crew of roided up cheaters thinks they are anyway. Out here all clicked up, not talking to anyone else in the competition, and just casually breaking her dad's world record punches like it's something you just do. Now look at all of them, posse up again like they're hot sh Oh hey Gohan, aren't you gonna introduce me to my future daughter-in-law? With this act of violation, Fidel stood surprised at the group of mystery fighters she was just cooking up, starting dialogue with Gohan like they were longtime homies. And the minute Big Krill saw Gohan roll up to the Budokai with a female, y'all already know he was scheming with the worst of intentions, thinking about that time back on the lookout all those years ago, where little homie almost made him lose the Android 18 bag. With the foulest intent possible, Krill immediately got on his BS, hitting Gohan with the, oh, I see you, little bro. Not gonna hold you, bro. She ain't as bad as 18, but she is kind of fire. <laughs> I guess I see why she comes from the Satan family. You ain't telling me you were into the tomboy thing. I got hella baddies from my old rotation that I could have introduced you to. Let me hit up Marin real quick. Krillin, you're about to ruin my chances of getting this granddaughter pack it up. Gohan, me and the crew are heading over to the junior division to wash trunks and your little brother clap some cheeks. You should both come join us when you finish up here. Good meeting you, Videl. And Gohan, don't let her trick you into getting married at the tournament. That's how you got here. And with that last bit of TMI, Son Goku and company made their way to the stands to watch the newest generation of Saiyans cook. By this point, Gohan is just waiting in the line press trying to figure out why everything is moving so slow. But Videl needs the tape to be rewinded all the way back so she can get some answers. Gohan, you know those fellas? Absolutely. You saw homie in the dusty orange gear with the game winning smile? That was my pops. Wait, 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 your pops? I thought you said he cheated on your mom and they got divorced or something. You told me that man was gone. Videl, you got it all wrong. I meant gone, gone. Like, did you see the halo that man had over his head? Bro's deceased. He just cashed in his afterlife commissary points for a one day good behavior pass to fight in the tournament. As Videl sat there, mouth open, attempting to explain to Gohan just how little that explanation clarified anything, the junior tourney was set to begin, and who else but the world martial arts champion Hercule should open up the show. Coming through with his patented Richard Nixon double P signs, Hercule galloped his way to the stage, took to the air, and intended to enter the middle of the arena with a flip that would dazzle the audience and set the tone for the excitement they could expect from the upcoming underage blood sports division. But what instead happened was Buddy tripped over his pocket, cracked his cranium on that hard ass tournament floor, and spent the better part of 30 seconds writhing around in agony as the public tried to assess whether this was a bit or if Hercule just bit the big one. I'm not even that type of dude that cracks up off a of slapstick humor like that, but there's just something about Mr. Satan getting his pockets ran that makes me laugh every time. It's like he was built for it. Following Hercules' nightmare levels of public humiliation, we enter the backstage of the Juniors Tournament where we get our first taste of the chemistry between Young Trunks and Goten that's going to carry this arc on its back for at least half its runtime. I don't know if I really appreciate it on my first watch of the series, but the banner between Goten and Trunks is absolutely top tier and is low-key one of the reasons that I actually mess with the anime anime version of the Buu Saga more than the manga in many spots. There's so much characterization that takes place in the ad-libs and subtle character interactions of the anime-only Buu Saga that makes the characters feel living and breathing and takes the comedic relief to the next level. 
Just for a slight example, take this moment backstage with Trunks and Goten talking about what they're going to do with the prize money after they finesse the bag from all the rest of these little ass preschoolers without alien DNA. The conversation plays out pretty much the same in both the manga and the anime at first, with Goten saying that he probably was spending on some cool ass toys while Trunks roasts him for being childish and Goten claps back that's easy for him to say when his mom has shown in Jeff Bezos and has more money than she could ever spend on BBLs in her lifetime. But there's just a small interaction that occurs before Joe Dirt pulls up and starts pressing trunks in the anime version that I appreciate so much. That's just absolutely missing from the manga. As the minutes when a mullet makes the mistake of getting ready to pull up on trunks, we return to Goten and trunks continuing their conversation when trunks chimes in with a, you know what, if I win, I'll probably use the money to get you a real barber. Absolutely just charbroiling Goten before his interaction with his soon to be punching bag that represents exactly what I love about the anime version. The broadcast team, and especially those responsible for the dub, which I'm most familiar with, did a standout job of making Goten and trunks feel like real ass kids rather than small adults with squeaky voices. The little additional banner they added to the script between these two does so much to endear them to the audience and it's something that the anime as a whole does very well in this arc. Adding little moments that go a long way in fleshing out the relationship between characters that in the manga can feel a bit rushed without the added context. Getting back to the action though, we return to the world tournament stage where Trunks is making his way into the ring to box with Theo Vaughn who has been in his ear talking absolutely crazy for the past 10 minutes. Up top in the nosebleeds, Bulma and company prepare to watch Trunks get busy when a loudmouth BBW makes her way to the seat next to him complaining about how her Nikon broke so she can't watch her son put the beaters on this 8 year old in 4K. Bulma tried but could only listen to the nonsense for so long before going full petty mode and yelling for her little boy to knock the bed bugs off that trailer dweller and bring home the gold. As the announcer yells fight, Kurt Russell asks Trunks if he has any final words, to which Trunks replies with a perfectly executed leg sweep and a launcher combo that sends oofy doofy mans like Rod Stewart 11 feet in the air and crashing back down on the concrete neck first. That's gonna leave a mark rendering him unconscious instantly and leaving Trunks as the new crowd favorite. And Bulma up top was left no choice but to add a little fuel to the fire, flexing on Michael Bolton's mom with a quickness as he left the stadium in a stretcher. The anime then treats us to a montage of the garbage tier fights that go on in the tourney before it's Goten's turn. Lending some credence to the announcer's comments that the tournament really has been absolutely cheek since Goku and Jr. did their thing back in the day. The piece that overcame the earth since those times left the competition with a severe drought of homies with hands. Eventually though, Goten's turn arrives and he just so happens to be matched up with Mitch Trunchbull's second son who also thinks he's gotta get to the ring after hitting his growth spurt early and getting sturdy on middle schoolers. Bulma can't help but remark on how she knew that ugly ass boy that stepped into the ring looked familiar with a face like that it just had to be the brother of the kid who had Trunks' Capsule Corp 8's tattooed on his backside. In quick fashion, the announcer declared the fight on and it appeared the trash talk gene did not fall far from the tree, as David Spade's brother couldn't stop himself from cutting a promo from the moment the bell rung. My favorite part of the whole thing is Goten's innocent reaction to the threats and the intimidation. Rather than being upset by the insults and the name calling, he's just confused as he proceeds to block the kid's attack with a single hand and even finger, genuinely wondering how someone this weak is able to talk that much. Goten even pleads with the kid in the middle of the fight to take things seriously because if this is really all he's packing, he's gonna get behind that vending machine and take another nap. Channeling all his strength and doing his best Dio impersonation, David Bowie here attempts to muda muda Goten to death, using everything he has in the tank until Goten decides that he's seen enough, chin checks the kid with the slowest punch he can muster and puts the kid to sleep instantly. Amazing the crowd, believing mommy thickums in the stand none too happy. Blinded by rage at seeing both her sons get slept by the pre-K Taekwondo club, the BBW baddie lashes out until her rampage is quickly put to an end by Chi Chi, who refuses to have her payday interrupted by the emotional outburst of a crazed Karen. And as anyone familiar with the two boys may have guessed, the grand finals of the tourney came down to Young Trunks and Goten. Before the main event could get underway, tournament staff recommended that Hercule might want to take a quick hiatus from his stogie and mimosas to peep what was happening in the junior division, because the kids that were getting ready to box right now were a little different from your ordinary competition. None too enthused, the champ decided fine, he'll take a look at the match only to verify which of the little gremlins he was going to be embarrassing in their sparring match later. With all eyes in the stadium, including the Z homies glued to them, Goten and Trunks began the match that would make history and decide who would be the first champion of the Tenkaichi Budokai Jr. division. And what popped off, I say with zero exaggeration, would be one of the sickest fights in all of Dragon Ball Z no contest. Even though the stakes were comparatively low compared to the planet busting ultimatums we're used to seeing the Z homies duke it out for at this point, 
There was just something special about watching the newer generation of Saiyans duke it out on the world stage, and you couldn't help but become invested in the outcome. Watching the children of both Goku and Vegeta test one another on the world tournament platform felt powerful not only because it served as an indicator of just how far we've come since the start of the series and how much things have progressed, but it taking place in this arena specifically gave it a uniquely Dragon Ball type feel that we haven't experienced in ages in Z. After being immersed in so many back to back life or death battles with universe shattering threats, that feeling of significance of the spirit of competition and honing one's skills against not only an equal opponent but a friend got lost just a bit in all the shuffle. But in this match between Trunks and Goten, we see that feeling get revived and it almost serves a symbolic purpose, representing a merger between the original Dragon Ball as well as the Z series that is unique to the Buu saga as a whole and something that I really only came to appreciate on the rewatch all these years later. Speaking of the hands being thrown though, from moment one it is clear that not only were these boys there to throw down, but also power wise they're pretty close to even and that this was going to be the farthest thing from an easy dub for either of them. After a quick forearm clash to test the waters, the two start going toe to toe with no hesitation, while well, both of them are treating only briefly to catch the slightest bit of air before jumping back into the mix, eventually taking the fight to the air where Goten catches Trunks lacking and hits him with a hook that landed so hard it had Vegeta up in the stands clutching his left arm on reaction. That punch landed so vicious Videl damn near had to look away and Goku was up top like, oh Kami, these boys are throwing them. The back and forth between these two little fellas had the whole Tenkaichi Budokai sick to their stomachs. Unsure of what to make of the ungodly levels of athleticism present between two kids who collective age barely cracked the double digits. Once the fight made it back to the ground, Little Trunks decided it was his turn to get active, busting out his bag of tricks and confusing Goten's tenderized brain with after image techniques and booting the kid so hard in the back he was damn near catching Z's in the air till his mom got him out of his coma, reminding him that he could fly and he got back in the action. Realizing the situation was crucial, Goten decided it was time for him to change things up and starts using his head, literally. And the boy shot straight at Trunks like a bullet bill straight out of Mario Wonder and gave the capsule court mini tycoon a piece of his mind before coming at him with a flurry of attacks and taking the offense to him. Trunks, realizing he needed to gain some space, took the fight to the air, but Goten was on him like green on Piccolo. And before he realized it, little dude had him yoked up in a full Nelson, ready to end his whole tournament run. Before Trunks clapped back with an elbow to the cheek on some flat out nasty work and then kicked the poor kid straight to the ground with a foot straight to the spinal column, giving visions that hit that turned their Uncle Nap into a paraplegic. This new generation is sturdier than they used to make them though, and after both those kids made their way back to land, they rushed towards each other and fed each other the craziest knuckle sandwich either of them ever ate in their life. Just an absolutely textbook cross cut that I can't lie gets me hype every time I see it. The boys then took the fight to the skies again, ending in yet another clash, and sends the kids back to the ground where they take a moment to give each other some well-deserved props on the S-tier display of ass beating they've been putting on for the general public. Realizing that Goten has indeed learned a few tricks from Biggest Brother Gohan, Trunks decides to really test the waters by shooting a beam at Goten from damn near point blank to see how he responds. Gohan and Krill are up in the stands ready to instant transmission out the stadium, convinced that little Trunks is about to be responsible for no less than 30 cases of first degree manslaughter, launching a key blast towards civilians that close. Mans like Goku has zero worries though, encouraging them to watch the little ones cook. As Goten dodges the blast, it heads straight for a pack of NPCs, then Trunks manipulates his key and lets it fly into the air harmlessly. As the sea crew breathed a sigh of relief, the respirate was short-lived when Son Goten then stanced up and before any of them could adequately blink, fired off his patented Kamehameha that thankfully veered upwards at the last minute, managing to only endanger property rather than countless lives. As Goten and Trunks took their fighting stances and prepared to enter the endgame, Mr. Satan was in the middle of a cardiac episode, finally piecing together why these little munchkins appear so familiar. Amid his PTSD-induced flashback, the dirty orange gi and explosions, it immediately brought him back to the day of the cell games, and the Steiner math was quickly coming together. But while Satan was finally beginning to get the picture, Trunks was in the air ready to bring things to an end. Trunks had Goten wrapped up in a fool Nelson returning the favor from earlier and agreed to put an end to the torturous turn of events for the young fighter if he cried uncle in front of the whole venue and admitted defeat. No longer able to hold his tongue, Vegeta couldn't help but comment to Kakarot that it looked like the superior warrior was about to win after all. And right when it seemed that all hope was lost and Goten was left with no choice but to surrender, bright yellow aura suddenly took a hold of the 
the young boy in a seemingly superhuman fit of power, broke free from Trunks' hold while leaving Satan mind broken in the process. It finally clicked. That's where he knew that little monster from. He's one of those golden haired freak shows from the cell fight, just like his old man that came before. And right there, with Hercules' mind bending realization, is where we'll call it. Trunks vs. Goten is an absolute classic, y'all, and I hope y'all had just as much fun reliving it as I had watching it. Tune in next time, homies, as the battle for the strongest of the new generation comes to an end. Which of the young warriors is going to take the mantle of the junior champ and test their luck against the invincible Mr. Satan? And what surprises lie in wait for our adult competitors as the opening of the World Martial Arts Tournament draws near and things appear to get stranger with each second that passes? I guess there's only one way to find out. Be easy, everyone, and talk to you again in the next video.